You're watching Seatome TV. Knowledge is power. Um, just have a question about the aromatase inhibitors, um, anastrozole, letrozole, you mentioned yeah. as the non-steroidal aromatase inhibitors. Right. But what about the steroidal? Um, is it as effective? Um, because I have been on letras or anastrozole to begin with, then letrozole, because I had such terrible um, Achilles tendonitis. Mm. The switch, the switch has helped, but I okay. think like a large percentage of women that have um, muscle uh, joint and bone pain, yeah. I experience that. Would it right. be less on the exostain? Exomestane, I would believe it's probably worse. Um, oh. some, of the, some of the, yeah, some of the doctors that uh, I really respect um, are against using exomestane. They, they say it's just not a good thing for a lot of pa patients. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with the aromatase inhibitors because it's not really a targeted therapy. It's a very general therapy of reducing estrogen. And, and it's kind of something uh, we're not crazy about, you know, we like to, we like to see a targeted therapy be used where there's a possibility for it. Um, I suspect that someday we're just not even going to be using these aromatase inhibitors. We're going to be targeting the proper things that need to be targeted. And I think Fulvestron will probably, um, replace those at some point in time. So okay. it, it's not there yet, but yeah. Um, so after, after two years on uh, the aromatase inhibitors, I, I really, my life is being greatly impacted yet. They I, say, you know, they want to see you on it for five years. Yeah. So if I was to do the DNA testing, um, the RNA expression, the tumor DNA sequencing, mm -hmm. Would that give more of an idea of what targeted therapy should Most be definitely. to prevent? Yeah, yeah, it would definitely help you a lot there. And it would also give you a good indication uh, as to whether you have an aggressive genetic component or non-aggressive genetic component. You know, we had a perfect case where we had a patient who um, had recurrence after five years. And, um, you know, we thought it was the worst case scenario. And the doctor wanted to put them on palbociclib instead of uh, a bemocyclid and also an AI instead of um, um, fulvestrant. Uh, and we were concerned about that. And so uh, we did their genetics. We found that they basically had hardly any genetic mutations and that their cancer was really not a aggressive form of cancer. And it was likely, uh, you know, not going to ever go uh, too aggressive. And so we, we got them on the Zometa and it cleared up their bone mets and they're able to stay on the palbociclib. They don't need to go on anything else uh, and, and the full Vestrant and they had an excellent response to it. So, you know, understanding your genetics, is just really, it's the key, it's the beginning of cancer treatment. And it, it's like, you wouldn't want to go on a big trip across Canada or across the United States without a map or without some sort of way of determining where you're going. And this is what genetics, uh, tumor DNA sequencing and expression testing is. Uh, it really is the fundamental key um, aspect to anyone's cancer. Okay, thank you. Yeah. After three years um, diagnosis, ago, three years ago diagnosis of triple mm -hmm. negative, I'm so far beating the original odds that were quoted okay. then. Okay. But a, a year later, I had um, a different tumor, um, an estrogen positive tumor, and thus the, um, the uh, estrogen blockers, the aromatase inhibitors. So. Okay. Do you know what your estrogen receptor score was? Was it 100% on that tumor? Uh, no, I think it was probably ew, 80 to 100, maybe. It was, it was high. You may, have, I, you may have the subtype of triple negative that is estrogen positive, the slightly estrogen positive. Um, I would definitely get genetic testing if I was you. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, because you, you, know, you need to know what subtype you have because you know, if you have the subtype that is, that is um, uh, you know, slightly, slightly guided by estrogen positivity, that opens up the door for a whole bunch of other molecular targets within that pathway that aren't normally available for an estrogen positive person. So, so for example, if you have triple negative and all of a sudden you have estrogen positivity, 
Um, that's not the same as having estrogen positive breast cancer. You still have the genetics of the triple negative. It's just that you have some of your tumors with estrogen positivity. So uh, that's a completely different thing than having estrogen positive breast cancer. Okay, well, the estrogen positive was a totally different tumor in the other breast a year later. Yeah. And yeah, I had already Definitely been started. genetic testing would be an important yeah. thing there. Yeah. And okay. um, we would probably, yeah, we'll have to talk, talk about it on a phone conversation because it's going to be a unique type of testing. Um, we have to figure out which one to test. Um, but it's rare for people to have two separate tumors. Usually the genetics are going to be the same in, in both tumors. Um, there will be some variation, obviously, in the estrogen, a positive one, but it's probably not that different than a triple negative with some estrogen expression. Okay, well, I'll definitely get my information together and get yeah. in touch with you because I really... I'm not doing well on these AIs okay. <laughs> and I'm okay. 70 years old and I'm otherwise in really good health, but okay. yeah. Thank you for watching Seatome TV. Subscribe below and stay informed.